In this video, I'm going to talk about continuity of a function at a point. So, um, just look at the limit. We've already discussed limits. We're taking the limit as x approaches a of f of x. And basically, continuity says that if the limit is the same as the function value, then we say that f is continuous at x equals a. All right. So an intuitive way graphically to think of this is that if you can draw the graph of the function without taking your pencil off the paper. So, you know, for example, if you have something like this and you, you know, you can draw the graph of it and never lift your pen off the paper, then the function is continuous. Now that's, that's just in kind of an intuitive graphical way of thinking of it. Uh, this is a little bit more technical. So what's saying is, I use a, another color maybe, um, you know, if this is A, alright, so first we have that the limit, right? So we're kind of, we take the left hand limit as x approaches A and the right hand limit as x approaches A. So we're kind of coming up toward this thing and it converges to some point um, right here. Okay, on the y-axis, it, it's converging on this point. So the limit exists. I don't know, we'll call this L, right, as the limit. Um, so that's the limit part of it. And then if the function value, remember, the limit and the function value in general don't have anything to do with each other, right? The limit could exist and the function value doesn't exist, or it's undefined. And the function could exist and the limit doesn't exist. Um, or they could both exist and not be equal to each other. So this is this is kind of a new thing here, or it should be. At least we have to pretend that we're surprised that it's possible for them to be equal because they really are different ideas. Um, so in this case, um, you know, this right here, that is f of a. And since l and f of a, since the, the function is going, the, the point that the function wants to go to is actually a function value, then we say, that f is continuous at a, all right? So um, I wanna look at some examples of how a function might fail to be continuous, because I think sometimes we can better understand what a concept is or what something is by seeing what it's not, all right? And uh, so there are, well, real quick, let me just review um, the, the three things that we need. So first, we need for the limit as x approaches a, of f of x, we need that to exist, all right? Uh, because in order to have an equality, we need a finite number on both sides of this equation. Secondly, we need f of a to exist, all right? So that's just looking at those individually. If one of these doesn't exist, you don't have to go any further. You know it's not continuous. Thirdly is what's in the box up there. They have to be, we have to have um, that those two numbers are equal to each other, all right? So let's um, look at basically the, the different ways that <coughs> a function can fail to be, or I should say these are, these are types of discontinuities. And they're connected to the different conditions right here of continuities, types of discontinuities. Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called a removable discontinuity. And I'll explain what I mean by removable. Um, so let me give you an example. Sine of x over x. All right. So if we <coughs> look at the graph of that function, it, it comes up and then kind of is damped out, you know, as, as we get, as x gets larger. All right. Um, but there is a hole right at zero. So if I want, want to examine this at x equals zero, all right? So first we see that it's discontinuous because, well, if I define this to be f, then f of zero is undefined, all right? Because zero over zero, you can't divide by zero. So number two, number two breaks down here, and we know that this is discontinuous. All right. However, number one works, right? I mean, we can take the limit 
as x goes to 0 of sine x over x. The, the graph uh, is suggestive here, right? That right there actually turns out to be this, this value right here is 1 right, on the y-axis. So we can show that this limit equals 1. All right. So the idea in terms of this, this term removable, it basically refers to a hole because a hole could be filled in. In other words, we could define g of x to be sine of x over x when x is not zero. So otherwise, in other words, it looks just like this anywhere, everywhere except on the y-axis. And then just let it equal one when x equals, whoops, when x equals zero, right? So right along here. In other words, we're gonna, fit, we're gonna define a new function that fills in that hole. And that's what we mean about removable because this function would be continuous, right? G of zero would be one and the limit as x approaches zero. So I could say uh, G of zero is one and the limit as x approaches zero of g of x, well remember everywhere else it's this, so we already know that that limit is equal to one. So the function value is one, the limit's equal to one, so we have continuity, all right? So that's what we mean by removable discontinuity is everything is there, everything looks good, the limit exists except there's a hole, all right? Um, it might also include something of the nature, you know, Maybe we had something that looks like this, except instead of having a hole, the function value is down here. That would still be what we would call removable discontinuity because we could redefine the function in this way so that the limit and the function value agree. So anyways, that's removable discontinuity. Um, let's look at another type of discontinuity um, called a jump discontinuity. So the second type of continuity is called a jump discontinuity. All right. Um, and this is kind of obvious from, from the graph. Um, let me give you an example. X over the absolute value of X. So the graph of this thing, um, well, so uh, again, I'll call this F of X. Um, so when x is positive, I have a number divided by its absolute value, but its absolute value is just the same number. So this is just gonna be constant at one, right? <clears throat> Notice at zero, f of zero, once again, undefined, right? Because we get zero over zero. So there's, there's a hole right here. So we know it's discontinuous because going back to here, this one flunks. So we know we don't have a discontinuity. We know it's not continuous. And then when x is less than zero, what we're gonna have is a negative number, right? All these x values are negative, but then it's over the absolute value, so I have basically the same number but positive. So any number divided by its negative is negative one. So we're gonna be down here. And again, we have this, this hole right here because f of zero is undefined. So this is the jump discontinuity. In this case, one kind of characteristic of the jump discontinuity is that in addition to the function not being defined, the limit as x approaches zero of f of x does not exist, all right? Because, well, we've got this type of a thing going on, right? It's not, in order for this to limit to exist, it has to converge on a point, right? Like this one here, this converges on the point it wants to go from both sides, it wants to go to one. Here, well, it's not hard to show. You can just look at the graph and say that the limit as x approaches zero from the left is negative one, and the limit as x approaches zero from the right is positive one. So if the left and the right-hand limits don't agree, then we know that the function doesn't exist. All right, the other thing I wanna, just kinda of coming back to this idea of a removable discontinuity, this was removable because remember, because the limit existed, we could we could fill in, we could re, we could rewrite the function as a new function that fills in the function value at the value of the limit, right? We just filled in one because that was the limit of this function. Notice in this case, we can't do that. There's we could, we could, if we wanted to, we could define this to be g of x, and we'll let it be x over absolute value of x 
when x is not equal to zero. So we don't worry about this part on the x-axis. But what would we fill this, what would we fill in in order to have this thing be continuous, right? So one possibility is we could let it be one, right? So, but, so it has a function value now. So now it, it passes the test here, but the limit still doesn't exist, right? We still have this kind of disconnect where this is going to one and this is going to negative one. Likewise, I could make it negative one, right? And, and, and fill it in down here. Um, but, but that doesn't solve the problem. So that's what we, this kind of maybe gives you a better idea of what we mean by remo removable. We can fill in, because the limit exists, we can fill in the function value there and make it continuous. You cannot do that with a jump discontinuity. Um, so the other thing I want to mention here, just a little, uh, and a little aside, we can have left and right continuous at a point. All right. Um, so that just goes back to our original definition, right? So if we if we say the left sided limit equals the function value, then it's left continuous. Or if the right sided limit equals the function value, then it's right continuous. So in this case, we would have this would be right continuous because as you the left sided limit or sorry the right sided limit the right hand limit here goes to one and the function value is one. So we would call that right continuous. If we had filled it in down here instead, remember we can't fill in both of them because we don't have a function, right? We have two y values associated with one x value and that contradicts the definition of the function. But if we had filled it in here instead of up there, then the left sided limit would equal the function value and it would be left continuous. Okay, moving on to a different example. Um, and this is the third and last type of discontinuity. It's called an infinite discontinuity. Right, um, and yeah, it's also this infinite is kind of suggestive in that you might have an idea about what's going to happen here, right? So an example would be one over x squared. All right, so if we look at one over x squared, uh, its graph looks like this. So. Let's look at, let's examine this function, the continuity of this function at x equals zero. You know, going back to my kind of little intuitive graphical um, understanding of what continuity is, you can already see here, I had to lift up my pen to draw this, so we know it's not continuous. And the issue, it looks like, is right along the y-axis again, right? So what is the limit as x goes to zero of f of x, all right? Well, the left side of limit tends to infinity the right sided limit also tends to infinity, so this, the limit, the function as x goes approaches to zero tends to infinity, all right? And remember, for this to have any meaning, well, I guess we could, this one's now the right sided, so um, let's just focus on this one. For this to have any meaning, both sides of the equation have to be a finite number. Um, infinity is not a number. It's just basically saying this thing increases without bounds. So, so we're dead in the water, right? We can't even start because this, this first piece doesn't work. But notice um, it gets worse. F of zero is also undefined. So, um, so you know, that it's, it's not good things happening here in terms of continuity. Um, so these are separate things, remember, but we would call this an infinite discontinuity because the, the point of discontinuity, what happens is the function goes off toward infinity at that point. Um, and the function is, is not defined. Now notice, just like the removable discontinuity, you know, we talked about, again, contrasting the removable from the jump discontinuity. The big thing with the removable discontinuity was that the, the limit existed. And because the limit existed, we could fill in the function value and make it continuous. We could, we could call this, we could say f of zero equals well, I guess what we'd want to do, scratch that, is call it g of x, right? And we'll let it be 1 over x squared when x is not equal to 0. And then we can just call it 0. You can call it anything you want, right? Um, and at x equals 0. In other words, we can fill in a function value along the, the y-axis, but it doesn't, it doesn't fix our problem because both of these are kind of broken with this function. So filling in, arbitrarily filling in a function value doesn't help us 
because the limit doesn't exist, or at least the limit is not a, a, a finite. It's not a finite limit. So, um, so it's not removable in that sense. So in this case, you have this idea where the limit doesn't exist, um, but it's not an it, it's not an infinite limit. And in the case of an infinite limit, then you have um, an infinite discontinuity. In both of these cases, filling in a function value won't fix the problem. Um, so just you know, we, we haven't seen one yet. I guess the closest no is that true? Uh, I want to see one where both of these no. So let me just give you a graphical example. Um, where both of these exist, um, but this continuity still fails. So I'll just kind of make something up here. All right, so we could have, well, I'll just put a hole here and we'll have something. So already you see I've had to lift up my pen. This is discontinuous. We'll call this A, all right? But I'm gonna put a function value, all right? So this would be F of A on the Y axis and that would be L, all right? So I'm gonna call this function F. So what's going on here, you could say that the limit as X approaches A of the function, right? So again, looking at um, as we approach from the left and from the right, it converges on that point, which is L. Likewise, the function is defined at that point. So F of A exists. So here's a case where um, both one and two exist, all right? But they're not the same, right? L and F of A are two different points. So I just wanted to mention, you know, this would this would also be a removable discontinuity because we could we could define g. In other words, we could we could define a function g of x, you know. So it's f of x when x doesn't equal a and it's L when X does equal A, right? We just redefine it so that we take this point and move it right up there and fill it in. And then G of X would be continuous. So this is a removal of this continuity, but I just want to give you an example. Either of these could break down or both of these could exist, but they might not be equal to each other, all right? So that is kind of the idea behind continuity. And in the next video, I'm going to go through. Uh, so here, I want to emphasize this is this is continuity at a point, right? We say f is continuous at x equals a. In the next video, we're going to talk about continuous functions. What do we mean by a continuous function?